scientists have long told us that by the time children reach this age, seven, five, even younger, they are largely formed. Abilities and temperament that will serve a lifetime are almost set. But what happens in the early years that has so irreversible an effect? What are the ingredients of the mysterious mix, powerful enough to shape a person while it is still an infant? something universal in this intimate, sensuous, sometimes fiery first relationship that we recognize as mothering. From its mother, a child gets its first experiences of the world, the first stimulation of its senses, touch, smell, sight, taste, and hearing. With its mother, a child experiences its first social interchange and its first emotions. Investigators of human behavior are examining all these experiences and their interrelationships to determine what part each plays in a child's development. Can we discover the crucial factors in the rich and various stimulation a mother gives her young? Or is mothering so complex that it will resist analysis? Investigations of the relationship between mother and child proceed at all levels among humans and other mammals. In recent years, these studies of the behavior of lower animals have provided a new angle from which to observe the nature of humans. Most animals die if they are abandoned by their mothers. Motherless human infants usually receive some care. But the powerful effect of mothering upon the young can be appreciated more clearly when it is absent. Some of these children at Lührhaus Institution in Munich have suffered brain damage. Some are mentally retarded. All have suffered the effects of disrupted maternal infant relationship. The effects of early separation from their mothers upon children were noted in scientific publications some 25 years ago when psychiatrist Rene Spitz observed a high frequency of retarded development among institutionalized children. The English psychiatrist John Bowlby created controversy in 1944 with his conclusion that early separation leads to a character disorder marked by a lack of affection or feelings for anyone. These depressed children might be found in institutions around the world. They are withdrawn. Their pace of development has slowed. They are listless, vacant, unnaturally passive. They have few emotional contacts or relations with others, little spontaneity, no laughter, no tears. To go back to the beginning of the relationship between a mother and child, an infant's first human contact is likely to be at the breast of its mother. Here, it is closely held and probably rocked as it receives its first food and a rich mixture of sensory stimulation, body warmth, touch, taste, smell, the sight of the mother's breast and the calming of its urgent pangs of hunger. Our animal nature is an endowment we share with other creatures of the earth. If it is valid to compare human and lower animal behavior, the common experience of mammals, breastfeeding, may yield insights into the development of both. Psychologist Harry Harlow at the University of Wisconsin has long studied the importance of early experience to infant monkeys. Some time ago, he initiated groundbreaking experiments dealing with the relative importance of hunger and the sense of touch to young monkeys. In this film record of a Harlow experiment in 1958, a helpless infant monkey shows a simple reflex behavior, 
moving its head when it is touched. This reflex enables the infant to find the nipple of its mother's breast, but the experimental monkeys never saw their mothers. From birth, the monkeys were fed from bottles. Dr. Harlow then gave several infant monkeys these substitute mothers, a substitute of wire, another covered with cloth. Whether the cloth dummy or the wire dummy held bottles of milk, the monkeys preferred their cloth-covered mother substitutes at all times. In a large cage, with many objects to choose from, the young monkeys chose to cling to the contact comfort of their cloth-covered mothers. The isolated monkeys would spend as much as 15 hours a day clinging to their cloth mothers. And this attachment persisted after a separation as long as two years. When the monkeys were frightened, they ran to their cloth mother. When the cloth mother was removed, the monkeys showed signs of extreme disturbance. But they were calmed and comforted when the mother was returned. The wire substitute, even when it held a bottle, excited no affection in the monkeys. The apparent apathy of this animal and its rocking behavior became an important focus of later studies. Today, Dr. Harlow is still investigating the depression that follows the separation of young monkeys from their mothers. Dr. Harlow says that his work began as a mishap. He was raising single monkeys in separate cages when John Bowlby suggested that he was really raising a laboratory of abnormal monkeys. At that point, Dr. Harlow began to study the abnormalities. At the Hazelton Laboratories in Falls Church, Virginia, these normal monkeys are being studied and filmed by Dr. James Prescott of the National Institute of Child Health and Human Development. Active, curious, and alert, these healthy monkeys have been raised by their mothers. When they are put together in a cage, they react to each other with interest. They are at ease with each other. They play and touch each other freely. When Dr. Prescott separates the monkeys, they resist, holding each other tightly. They maintain body contact and cling to each other even through the wire mesh of their cages. Monkeys raised in isolation behave quite differently. These monkeys were removed from their mothers at birth. They were hand-fed in incubators. They were raised in cages through which they could see, hear, and smell other monkeys, but could not touch or be touched by them. When they are put together, there is no play between them. They seem indifferent to touch. Or they react as though touch is unpleasant and move away from each other. When they are held, the isolation-reared monkeys show signs of great stress, screeching and baring their teeth. The stereotype movements of rocking backwards and forwards over and over again are typical of animals deprived of normal mothering. It is as though the animals attempt to give themselves the touch and motion stimuli they were denied in infancy. Dr. Prescott has theorized